let's start by going back just um, a little bit to your decision to become a lawyer. How did that come about? I uh, had friends in high school, actually, with whom I debated frequently. When I had them to my home, my mother over overheard the conversation, and the next day she said to me, have you ever thought of going to law school? And I had not until then. I once heard you say that you had a law professor who circled the word, um, what was it? Feel. And said, we as lawyers don't feel, we believe. It was highly embarrassing at the time, and it was an exam that was given to us near the beginning of the school year. I, I just wrote that I feel something was true or not true. The dean, he was the dean of the law school at that time, Dean Fitzgerald, he uh, returned all the papers except, I think, two or three. And then he held it up and he said, look, I want you to see this. And he drew a big red circle around the word feel that I used in one of my answers. We don't feel when we're lawyers. We believe something is true or something is not true. It, it made me, it taught me a lesson unforgettable lesson. What is the achievement that you've had that you're the most proud of, Justice McMorrow? Well, of course, being elected to the Supreme Court. I had not expected that. I had never expected to go that route. But I had a lawyer come to my chambers to see me with an appointment. And she said, have you thought about running for the Supreme Court? And I said, oh, no, I had no base to run a campaign for Supreme Court. And she said, well, you do. You have us. You have the women. And I ran for election to the Supreme Court without party support the first time, and I lost. But I came so close to winning that I was told that I had a very good chance of if I did it again. I did not want to do that because I thought, I'm, we don't want to go through that experience again. It was humbling, it was expensive, it was embarrassing at times, and there just aren't that many vacancies. But curiously and unexpectedly, a vacancy did occur again. And so I, the same lady in, in, but a larger group came to see me. They said, you gotta run. And I said, oh no, not again. I'm not going through this again. And she said, well, you have to. We just about won the last time. And there was nobody else that had credentials that I had. I had both criminal law experience and civil law experience. And I got top ratings from all the bar associations. And so, again, she talked me into it. This time I won. What do you see the role of women in the legal profession today and moving forward? When I became a lawyer, women were relegated to primarily domestic relations, traffic matters, and um, probate work. The important thing that happened in the 70s was women became accepted into the law field, and we were then accepted to do uh, more complex work. Um, now, women can enter into any field they want. We weren't permitted to do that before. So we've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. When I was a prosecutor in the state's attorney's office, the man who was in charge of appeals asked me if I would like to argue a case before the Supreme Court of Illinois. I was a young lawyer and I was thrilled with his question. And so I studied the case uh, backwards and forwards. And then the day before we were to go down to Springfield to argue the case, another boss said that I could not go, that women do not argue before the Supreme Court. And then many years later, but he was not alive at this time, I became not only a justice, but the chief justice of the very court before which I was not permitted to argue. How do you feel when you see, or when you were sitting and saw women arguing before the Supreme Court? I was Court. very proud of them. I knew what they had gone through to get where they were, and I was just very proud of them. And how important is civility and professionalism to oh, our practice? I think civility is crucial 
to our system of, of laws and justice because it's not only the dispensing of justice, but also the appearance of justice that's important. The judges and the courts make important decisions. They decide, for example, uh, should a person live or die? Uh, they decide who should raise a child. They decide how all marital assets should be divided. Things that are uh, life-changing events, and the, the judges must decide that. The difficult questions must be answered by the judges without bad behavior, without somebody screaming or talking in a loud voice. In a more general sense, can you point to how collaboration can advance justice? I have had um, lawyers appear before me who, um, in the trying of their case, were not confrontational. You can do a lot. You can save a lot of money in uh, aggravation for everyone if you just collaborate where you can. You can't always do it, but where you can. If you did that, it would be to society's benefit 